doing? Yeah, yeah welcome to All Access. That's right. Tony Everybody put on his new shirt. <laughs> you know what? I'm going to ask you guys a question. Does anybody know what color this is? Yeah, just shout it out. Okay, I did not I hear, hear one person exactly. say what you said, Tony. Aqua. 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 That's good. Aqua, aqua. I said, Tony, what color, what, what are you wearing? What are your colors today? He goes, I'm not really sure. I think it's uh, turquoise. No? No. Okay, I got a feeling nobody really knows what color this is. But that's okay. It's us. It's not him. That's all right. That's all right. We'll, we'll move on. Moving on. Moving on. <laughs> do you want to do the honors? No, no. I'd let you do that. Really? You, know, you don't like when I do the honors. I do. But I, you I like... You think you do the honors better than I do. I like to do it. Go ahead. Not all not, right. Not ladies not. and gentlemen, I know you're excited because you got here early. And I don't blame you because I was trying to get here early myself. We loved him back in the LTD days. Went out on his own, and he is still doing it strong. He is a friend of the Soul Train Cruise. He comes as often as possible. So let's welcome him back, the one, the only, Jeffrey, Jeffrey Osborne. Osborne. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Jeffrey, Jeffrey, Woo Jeffrey. Yes. Oh, Does anybody no. know what color this shirt is? <laughs> <laughs> this debate is going to go on for a long Jeffrey, time. Jeffrey, you know, we've done this. Uh, how many times have we done this? Uh, oh, since we uh, No, uh, since the cruise. Three, four of these? Three. This week? Yeah, I think this is our fourth one. Is this the biggest crowd This is had? the largest crowd. Oh, that's because there's nothing else going on right now. It's <laughs> <That's laughs> not true. Because <laughs> we love us some Jeffrey Osborne. That's right. How woo, are woo, you woo. doing? How you I'm doing? I'm great. How are you doing? Yeah, doing you, good. You look like you're tanned. You've been in the sun. I was shining a little bit, too. You powdered me up a minute ago. <laughs> yeah, she <laughs> likes to powder me up, too. You know, I, and I, for, for something, I'm telling all your secrets. <laughs> Forget you about are. it. <laughs> you know, she's always like, Tony, let me hit you with the powder. And I just figured out. She doesn't do it for me. She does it for her. That's right. Because she doesn't want to sit next to a guy that's shining. They both look good, don't they? So she asked yeah. Jeffrey, you know, Jeffrey, you want me to hit you too? So she's doing it for her. She's not doing it for me or Jeffrey. As you would say, moving on. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to the Soul Train Cruise. Well, thank you. It's nice to be back. It's been a while. It's been a I think while. It was 2018, the last time I was here. Oh, that's been a while. Yeah, so it's been a while. Well, the last one was what, 2019? Yeah. Something did you do 2020? No. We did 2020. Yeah. Oh, that was the last 20, one. Okay. Just before the craziness. Exactly. Hit. I know it hit yeah. right after. Okay. Yeah, it did. So as I mentioned when I was bringing you on, that you come back over and over. Right. Why is it that you always say yes? Why did you? Because I'm part of the Soul Train family. Right. Yeah, doom, 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 doom. There you go. That's right. That's I, right. You know, I started out on Soul Train. You, <laughs> you know, if it wasn't for Soul Train, I don't think any of these acts on this ship would be who they are. That's right. That's right. Mm, That's right. Absolutely. Well, Jeffrey, it's been a while, and uh, there's been a lot going on in the world since uh, this COVID thing and yeah. that whole thing. And I know it's affected a lot of people, a lot of people's lives, and. Just curious uh, how, how you felt during this time and uh, how creatively, you know? Creatively, I think it helped me uh, it, because I had time to kind of reflect and really look back at what I've done and what I've accomplished and what I need to do to keep it going. So for me, it, was, it helped me because I started doing things that I took for granted, like practicing. <laughs> I mean, I never did it because I was working every week. And, you know, you work four days a week and then you try to recover rather than sit around. And so that time off, I started doing vocal exercises, which I haven't done in forever, you know. I started playing drums, which I hadn't played since 1975. I had to do something. I was going crazy. I'm like, oh, I'm going to sit here. I'm going to start playing drums a little bit. I picked up a little trumpet and wow. kind of helped my diaphragm, just breathing. So I kind of got back into myself and to family, you know, uh, because I'm gone so much that it's, it was nice to actually bond with my family. And uh, those, you realize that those are, those are so many precious 
years and hours that I've missed with my family, just traveling all the time to doing shows. So it was actually refreshing for me, other than the sadness and tragedy that was going on, you know, because I think it touched probably all of us. I know I had family members pass and my manager passed, and, you know, it was, it was a lot as far as how it affected me, but uh, I think a lot of people here went through the same thing, and, uh, and the beautiful thing is that we're almost through it. We're almost through it, and it's nice to see people actually trying to get back yeah. to some kind of normalcy, yeah. you know? That's, uh, I'm, I'm happy the way you answer that question because it was a good time for people to reflect, right. maybe even reboot. You know, they're doing a lot of times. People don't have the option of doing what they love or they've chosen a different path for different reasons. They work because they have to. Exactly. And uh, during the pandemic, you know, you find that people kind of figured out what they really love and made yeah. some changes. Exactly. So it's good that you took advantage of that opportunity and just, yeah. you know, got back to... You started as a drummer. I did start as a drummer. Uh, I met LTD in my hometown of Providence, Rhode Island. I was the only mm. black person in Rhode Island. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> Everyone else is Cape Verdean. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm kidding. I'm, but I was the youngest of 12, so my family kind of dominated blackness in Providence, Rhode Island. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I met him, I guess it was 1970, and uh, I was playing in a local band. I had, uh, you know, some guys I worked with that were working their way through the school, of Berkeley School of Music. And someone said, there's 10 black musicians playing down in this club. And I said, 10 black musicians in the club. So I went down to see them. <laughs> Where are the black people? And unfortunately for me, that drummer got taken to jail for smoking weed, which everybody smokes weed everywhere now. <laughs> it was a major offense Whoa. in 1970. So they locked him up. And I ended up sitting in, playing, sang a few songs. And that's how I ended up getting the job with LTD. So was it as, like, we've talked to uh, some folks that said, I started playing an instrument, and then someone found out I could sing. And how was it for you? Was it? You no, I, I, always, I always sang. Um, you know, I came from a musical family. My brothers and sisters, most of them sang or played instruments. My father was an incredible trumpet player. And my mother used to make me sing for her company, so I guess since I was four years old. She tells me she would have me stand up and sing for all her company. And uh, my brothers had a singing group, and I was about eight, and they used to always be messing up parts, and they would call me to come down and sing the right parts. And then, you know, because they'd hate me after that. Like, get your brother out. Get your brother out of here. <laughs> He's a star. But, yeah, I've always sang. Uh, but when I started playing drums, it helped me get into bands, you know, so I started playing in all these bands. And so I played and sang at the same time. Now that you've fallen back in love with the drums, is that something that we're going to see, like at your shows, you're going to go and do a little something? Well, I said that was going to happen. You know, <laughs> I kind of alerted my band members that I'm going to be playing a song now in the show. And uh, we've been out on the road now since COVID, probably for a year now. I haven't played one time. <laughs> Not one time. Okay. So I don't think it's going to happen. I don't think so. <laughs> Thank you for the honesty. <laughs> you know, but but... When you were out, did you do more writing as well during the pandemic? Yeah, did a lot of writing, we, you know, a lot of writing. And, uh, of course, no one's heard any of it because I haven't done anything with it. But I did do a lot of writing. Uh, you know, those are the things that you kind of have to do to just get through the long periods of time that we were out away from these beautiful people because these are the beautiful people that make it happen for all of us. And uh, you had to find something to do. So, yeah, so I, I did a lot of writing. And uh, I came up with a couple of things, but, I, you know, it's a different world today. You know, I feel like I've been with record companies since 1972, and it looks like it's a new day now, and I don't want to get back into signing with another record company. Oh, yeah. So I think I'm going to do what the young folks do and just do it myself, put an EP out of some songs and send it out to my fans and see how they like it yeah. and uh, work it that way. I think it's time for independence yeah. now, you know. Yeah. Well, that's, is that something that you've been thinking of uh, for a while or is this just a new Well, it, new it, I have been thinking of it for a while, ever since my last record deal. <laughs> yeah. I've been thinking of it because, you know, it's funny, you, you go to these companies and... They 
put out one single and then they don't want to invest in the second single. So I have one single off the record and, and it wasn't even the single that I really wanted. It was what they wanted, you know. We kind of mutually agreed upon it. But uh, uh, when it came time for the second single, they didn't want to put the second single out. So what was the sense of doing an album? Yeah. I mean, you know, because like back in the day when we used to do an album, there would be five songs on the radio at the same time, you know. So it's a different day now. And uh, I figured I may as well just do it myself. You know, at one point I did have a little independent label. Uh, that I did the the live album on, and so I figure it's time to get back to that, and uh, you know, just do my own thing. I got to tell you, I think it's very exciting. I mean, having the machine behind you, of course, it's good for right. marketing and distribution and all of that. Right. Um, and it's a lot of work for the artist if you're putting out your own thing. But who doesn't know Jeffrey Osborne? Yeah. Well, I mean, it's a different world today. I mean, you got so many other digital mediums exactly. out there that you can get your music out to. Back in the day, it was very difficult. Yeah. Now you got Spotify, you got TikTok, you got Apple Music, you got all these YouTube formats YouTube. out there. YouTube, right? So, it's a lot easier to get it done now. Yeah, that's exciting. Do you, Jeffrey? Do you ever get uh, tired of hearing that woo woo woo? I want a woo woo woo. <laughs> I always listen. To be honest, I always wanted old. him to ask me <laughs> when one, during one of his shows to, to, to woo woo woo, <laughs> and I'm but I'm never around. I said, man, I wish I could woo woo woo, you know. But he he never asked me. Tony, I think the only reason you brought this up <laughs> is because you want to woo. You want to woo 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 right now, don't you? No. <laughs> <laughs> I, I want to woo woo woo. Go ahead, <laughs> Let it out, babe. Let Go ahead. It out. Get it off come your on. chest. Come on. Come on. That's all I got. Do it again. Come on. We that's all I it. got. No more. Just it. one woo woo woo. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> where did that where did that come from, Jeffrey? That woo woo. I mean, I wish I had written that song, I'll tell you. Uh really, because the way written. the way people talk about it, I would feel like you did I felt like you I did write you that. Did. I mean No, I didn't write it. I just sang it. But uh <laughs> <laughs> I became the woo woo man after I recorded it. That's what everybody was. That's what I'm, you know. My title was now the woo woo man. Yeah, I look at ESPN sometimes. The guys like woo woo woo. Oh yeah, there's a guy on ESPN, Tony. So what I think of his name is he's. Every t he thinks James Harden looks like me with the beard. And I never look like James Harden. No so way. every time there's a James Harden highlight, he says, woo, woo, woo. And I'm like, where are you coming from? I think he's like Tony. He's just looking for an excuse. Oh <laughs> he just wants to say, have you ever do try it. doing a concert and not singing that song? Uh, no, I'm not singing. I think woo, woo, love ballad. I got to do those two. Yeah, I would not you recommend know. leaving those out. I can flip, <laughs> you know, On the Wings of Love is, <laughs> I got songs that I have to look out and see what the makeup of the audience is mm. before I do them, you know. So Wings, I, I, it's more of a, for a corporate white audience okay. than it is for an R&B audience. Love Ballad is the R&B ballad, okay. you know, so... It depends on what the crowd looks like, but I always, I probably do wings all the time, but then, so and I you, have to do. When you look at this crowd now, what 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 song do you do? You what do? song do I see when I look at this crowd? I see uh, every time I move, I lose. When I look, I'm in. <laughs> yes. Oh yes. Hey, you don't have to stop right there. <laughs> or is he a show off or what? Is he a show off? And listen, I am here you for ask me. it. <laughs> ask him again. <laughs> oh, you God. know what? I always wonder because you know, watching Oz on stage, it's not only his voice, but it's very physical. You're up there dancing and all of that. How important is the physicality of it, like staying in shape and and all of that? I think that's very important, especially for me, uh, because I, I don't like to stand in one spot. I'm like, I can't dance, but I do move back and forth quite a bit. And uh, every now and then I'll jump off a stage, depending on how high it is. Uh, so I, it's, it's very important for me. I, I started years ago when I was 15 years old singing in nightclubs. Back in the day, we used to have nightclubs. You know, I'm sure some of you remember that. Today, it's all DJs playing in nightclubs. But back then, it was live music. And I was doing four shows a night, seven nights a week. Wow. And I started having these problems by about the sixth night. I was getting hoarse, so I went to this doctor, and he tells me, he says, well, he was an opera singer on the side. Oh. 
And he told me the best thing you could do is run. Run track. Go out and run. It opens up your chest cavity. It'll help you so much as a singer and learn how to sing correctly from your diaphragm. And from since I was 15 years old, I've been running every day. Wow. So people ask me, well, how do you keep your weight down? I've just been running every day. That'll do it. That'll do it. That'll do it. <laughs> I heard uh, Frank Sinatra used to do that. He was given that very same advice. Really? And that's what he did. He'd run, and while he was running, he would sing because he didn't have um, good breath control. Really? And someone told him to run yeah. so he can sustain, you know, carry That's those exactly, notes yeah. So I don't, he'd be I don't, running and singing. I'm shocked not more singers do that, yeah. you know, but it, it does help without a doubt, yeah. That's good. So, Jeffrey, what would you tell the younger, the young bucks of today when it comes to voice and training and singing and things of that? Because right now it seems like, you know, Anybody can sing now based on the music, based on what right. they can find out of these machines and things of that nature. What's well, different? It's different today. I mean, singing is almost like rapping. You know, it's kind of like, that's why you say anybody, because it's kind of a monotone thing and not really s expressing a lot with melody today. Uh, but, you know, anybody, as far as young singers, uh, I think the most important thing is vocal hygiene, which a lot of people don't think about because, you know, the most the, the vocal cord is the smallest muscle in the body, and it goes through more abuse than any other muscle because you're talking all the time. So you put so much stress and pressure on it. So the most important thing is to keep the inflammation off it. Because that's what laryngitis is. Laryngitis is the vocal cord swelling up, and the airstream cannot get through anymore. Mm -hmm. So you got to keep the inflammation off the cord, and that's vocal hygiene. That's, to me... The best thing is to steam, carry a little steamer, steam, uh, to gargle with like a good, really good sea salt that has all the trace minerals in it, and uh, or an herb. I gargle with golden seal. Uh, and, you know, it's, it's little things like that that I call vocal hygiene that helps you along as far as endurance is concerned because, mm -hmm. you know, we want to be able to do this as long as we like to do it, yeah. you know. Yeah. So there's a, there's a lot of little tricks as far as vocal hygiene is concerned. Uh, mm. And and then, you know, breath breath control. That's yeah. that's important. Breathing. This sounds out. like Dr. Jeffrey. I love it, though. Well, I've never yeah. heard that term, vocal <laughs> hygiene, but I, I like yeah. it. Yeah, that's really good. That's yeah, it's good for people who speak for a living. For, it is good. You know, yeah, it's, I mean, and there's little things that we take for granted. Like, singers warm up, but then they don't warm down. It's, just, it's like a runner. If you run a marathon, you can't just stop. Oh, yeah. you got to walk and walk and walk it off. The same thing with singing. If you sing a show, you should, after the show, warm down again, which do helps to relax the cord. Huh? How does one warm down? The same way you warm up. It's the same thing, the same kind of same exercise. exercise. Same kind of exercises, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yeah. You know, when you we were talking about younger singers and, and music of today, if you will, have you ever been tempted to kind of do something just that's just a departure from the Jeffrey Osborne vibe <laughs> to be, you know, kind of what, to match what's, what's happening What's happening today? Yeah. I would kind of like to do that now. I went through a phase where it was... Well, it wasn't me. It was like radio and record companies felt like you were selling out if mm -hmm. you were to flip and do what the younger people were doing. Mm -hmm. You know, they kind of, oh, what's he doing? That's not, that ain't him, you know. Mm -hmm. But I think, I think it would be fun today. I think what it would, would be you... fun to, uh, to do what is selling. Yeah. That's, you know, that's what the market is right now. And, I, you know, and I think, Looking back, I think I would have done things a different way mm. than, you know, you always have hindsight. Right. But I look at the young people today, and I may not like like some of the music, but I admire what they do. They all work together. And we didn't do that back in the day. Mm. When you see all these kids, all these rappers, they're all on each other's records. They're all, you know, yeah. they all, they network. And it just keeps them in the public eye over and over and over. And I admire that in, in how they present themselves. If I can just piggyback off of that, I know I'm hogging up all the questions. You are hogging up I all know, the but questions. It's, but that's okay. But it's so Angela. interesting. That's all right. Do you. Do you. Okay. You do well. You. <laughs> 
You heard him say it. No, but, but now that you're an independent artist, you can kind of spread your wings. You right. know, whatever you want to do, you can do because you're, you're in total control. Would you consider doing something, I mean, not necessarily that's so different because you sing so beautifully and, right. you know, everyone knows your signature sound, but I, what if it's just a track that the music is just Well, that's what I'm saying, different. yeah. 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 That would be the way for me to do it. Just get a very youthful today track mm. and sing over it and then have somebody do a little rap in the middle there, you know. That'd be hot. You know? You know, I mean, Angela sounded like one of those. Is what it is. Those, all they re- can, those record executives. All they could do is not accept it. She, she sounded, <laughs> Jeffrey, she sounded, <laughs> Jeffrey, she sounded like one of those record executives that she's trying to convince you to do something yeah. that you don't want to do. She got a label? Yeah. She yeah, got a label, label somewhere. She got that label attitude. <laughs> You know, I do not. I'm only asking questions. You know, it's like my father told me a long time ago. He said, you know, I remember we were doing a show at Soul Train Music Awards, and we had Puffy on the show one year. Right. Right? And he took all day rehearsing. And, I mean, all night. Really? And the right. budget was going through the roof. <laughs> and so we got kind of got into it. And I'm like, Puffy, you got you to gotta get going. I mean, <laughs> and so he heard about it the next day. My father heard about it the next day. And he said, you know, son, let me tell you something. He said, let these people do what they do. And if you let them do what they do, you get all the credit for it. Yeah. You know? So it was right. a real lesson, a hard lesson that I had to learn, you know, when it comes to, you know, speaking with artists and talking right. to them about their their, their craft. You right. know? Just let them do what they do. Exactly. And at the end of the day, you get all the credit. You know. There you so there you go. I like it. Now what that had to do with what we were talking about. Well, that was over your head, Angela. That was like up here somewhere, right. you know? It was up here. You wouldn't understand you. that, I you know? <laughs> I do love the quote, though. <laughs> no, that was pretty awesome. No, but Jeffrey, what, what uh, are there some artists that you, those that you respect vocal-wise vocal, vocal wise, uh, that you can tell us about? I mean, not, well, not I mean, only when you were growing up, but today. Are there any artists? Today's today artists that, that I respect? Um... Well, you know, I mean, we all respect Beyonce. I mean, I think she's incredible. I don't. There's not a lot of male vocalists anymore. Mm. That's what I find perplexing to me. It's that most of the young male artists want to rap. Yeah. Uh, I know. I had a. Uh, I have a celebrity golf tournament in my hometown, oh, yeah. and I had a contest, a hand me the mic contest, where. You know, it was for teenagers from 13 to 18, and the prize was a $10,000 prize for the winner. Ooh. And uh, I couldn't get any guys to come in and compete. It was all all females. It was wow. really amazing to me to see that there's not a lot of young male vocalists coming up. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it's kind of hard for me to say the younger people. Uh, well, I, if I did have a label... And I'm still thinking about what we were talking about. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> I can't let it go, Tony. <laughs> but this artist kind of reminds me of you a little bit. Who's that? And, I mean, you're, of course, my favorite. No, that's fine, though. No, no. <laughs> but, but would you consider a collaboration with somebody like Kim? Oh, Kim? I don't consider Kim a young artist. He's not, but oh, he's yeah. newer. He's newer. He's not that young. Kim's older than me. <laughs> <laughs> what <laughs> I mean no, I'm but kidding, I'm thinking but... of something like that like would that be yeah, I, I think I would open I'd be open to any collaboration that made sense I think the most important thing is the song yeah so if somebody comes with the right song I don't think it would matter I've always wanted to do a duet with Gladys that never happened you know that would be beautiful yeah yeah but yeah I would I would gladly take on uh you know, a project like that, doing something with a younger artist. I don't think it's up to me anymore. I think it's up to the younger artist to decide they want to do it with an old guy. Well, you know. I don't know. I think if they even had a clue that you would do it with them, they would jump at the opportunity. Well, I, 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 would, I would do that now. I, w- I would actually take uh, many steps in different directions now. Yeah, I mean, good. you know, so I think it would be refreshing, actually. Yeah, I'd be here for it. Tony, I don't know. Listen, this is your show. 
<laughs> Soon we go, we're going to be talking about pillow talk. You're going to say, Jeffrey, but we, at point, pillow talk. You know. That was your show, wasn't it? Pillow it's talk. Like, pillow talk. Late. We always talk about pillow. I'm yeah. surprised she hasn't brought it up yet. I was going <laughs> to. <No. laughs> I was trying to figure out how to work it into the conversation. So thank you. <laughs> Actually, you've been on pillow talk. I have done yeah, pillow talk. I want to invite right. you to come But back. Jeffrey, what songs are you planning to do on the Soul Train Cruise this year? What songs? What songs did you plan to do on the Soul Train Cruise? I plan to do most all of my songs. Ooh, oh, oh, yeah. A lot of them. Let's put it that way. Uh, I do uh, a lot of LTD. You know, uh, you know, and this is this is the LTD crowd here on the Soul Train Cruise. Oh, yeah. So I, I will I will do a lot of LTD, and then I mix in a lot of my solo stuff, and then I just do someone else's song if I want. I mean, I'll just do anybody's song. Okay. Don't tell them what you go going to hear. Okay. I love it. It's like, I can do what I want. I just want to be in the right spot when he starts the woo-woo-woo part. I'm going to get you this time. Now that I know. Now that I know. I'm going to call Please. you up. No, I can't wait. I can't I'm not, wait. I'm not, I'm not uh-oh, even. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Fine, Tony. Please you know what? I think I'm brave Tony. enough to do it. I'm, I'm not scared. For it. Jeffrey think, Osborne don't scare me. This I think you're right. <laughs> you don't scare me. You don't scare me. If you hand me that mic, okay. I'm going to woo woo. Right. Right. Okay. You. you heard him. We right. might have to you wrangle it back for you. <laughs> <laughs> Be like, okay, Tony, that's enough. <laughs> I'm going to let him go. I'm going to let him go. Uh, you know what? That is a brave moment in the show when you do that. Right. When you go out into the audience and you have people woo wooing with you, have there been some moments where you just wanted to crack up laughing, but you had to <laughs> keep it together? That's every show. Oh, oh. <laughs> yeah. that's almost every show. I mean, but the the worse they are, the better it is because the audience just gets off on them. They're yeah. so bad yeah. that people just enjoy it. I've been at those. But yeah, and, and everybody knows I'm going to do it every show. So sometimes people they come prepared, you know. I've had people come in with saxophones. What? Is that right? Sit in the audience, they would come up, and he got a little saxophone ready. To, I'm just like, waiting. what? Just waiting. Yeah. Just waiting for you to call him. So, so, Jeffrey, that means that the woo-woo-woo I did earlier, you could actually judge that. You you could tell me whether I got an A, B, C, or D on that one, right? I, I could tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's funny. That's enough. I'm not saying nothing else. I'm done. And I thought I sounded pretty good. You I did. could hear right. myself, you, you know. You, you know sound, what, you, Tony? You I, thought, good. I thought. I thought. <laughs> well, did he sound good? Yes. See, there you go. That was a soft. I, I that was soft. That was, <laughs> that was so soft. That was, did he sound pretty good? Yeah. yeah. So listen, <laughs> if you are in the audience and you see Tony and it's woo 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 time, please make sure that those two are connected. I'm calling him now out. Now that we all know. <laughs> I'm calling him out. <laughs> okay. <laughs> He's going to woo woo. Yeah, I, start, I started something now. Okay. Oh my uh, gosh. You know, we could sit here and talk to you all night. And, <laughs> you know, I know we all can't wait to hear you with what you're going to do on the stage. But you've mentioned that you're going to be independent. You know, that's going to happen soon. And you could sing whatever songs that you want. Are there any... I mean, if I ask you what the surprise is, it won't be a surprise. But is there anything we need to look out for this time? Oh, in in the, here on the Soul Train Cruise? No, there's no real big surprises. But uh, just that I'm crazy. So I do, you know... <laughs> I, I just off the top of my head, I'm liable to say anything, you know. I'm liable to, but it'll be a fun show. I, what I what I do like is to engage the audience. I love the audience to be a part of the show. So there are a lot of times when I like them to sing along, and you know, so because that's important to me. I think the what works for me is uh, is live. I, I prefer live over recording. Mm. because I can get that feedback. You, you know, it's a chemistry thing that happens between the artist and the audience. You know, you give, they receive, and then they give it back to you. And that's the beauty of, of yeah. doing live shows, you know. So. Yeah, speaking of, speaking of that, we did a really nice thing uh, a couple of days ago with uh, All Access where we had the audience ask a few questions. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, and actually, they asked some pretty good questions oh. that time. I don't know what they're going to do this time. <laughs> Especially, wow. especially, that especially, that was awful. since that was somebody just time. raised their hand before I even got so the question. So she's on all the soul train that's my group. girl. That's my girl. She's, she's on all the soul train What's your, what's your question? Everyone. All right. I know that you're going to ask So you got to repeat the question. So they, they want to know, they want to know if you're going to wear the muscle bound t-shirt <laughs> that you wear. See, that's why I don't like to go out in the audience sometimes. See? 
That's the Tony, reason why. You've got to do. Why. You've got to make the moves that she just made you when know, she asked the no, question. No, I'm not making that move. Okay, okay. But she, that move. you know that that's she's, the Jeffrey. That's you notice she said that the T-shirt was muscle bound. <laughs> <laughs> she did say that. <laughs> Uh-oh. Yeah, I'm gonna get that muscle bound t shirt. <laughs> Black muscle bound t shirt. Now that's that, and we got another question out there. Oh, there's, they're everywhere. <laughs> she said, if it wasn't for you, Jeffrey Osborne, my son wouldn't be here. See? And it's Jeffrey that owes me child support. <laughs> <laughs> that's classic. <I'm> so <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, that's a first. Hey. Uh, well, you know, they say I have baby making music. <laughs> you know, baby making music. Uh oh. The last time I don't know what to expect. Oh, I remember you. <laughs> so, I'm forever grateful because like, I was embraced by everybody. Oh, wow, that's, oh, that's great. Beautiful. Well, thank you because you. you... Oh, that's awesome. And for those who didn't hear the comment, Tony, do you want to. Yeah, the, his comment was that he was a white man in the audience, right. and Jeffrey Osborne yeah. chose him. And it changed his life. <laughs> wow. Because okay. I usually will ask if there's a white person that wants to sing. <laughs> you know, because all the black people are a little more aggressive, and they always, rah, rah, and then the white people are sitting back like this, and I'm like, mm-hmm. uh, so I always ask. And, uh, and thank you. Thank you for singing. Were you good? Yeah. Oh, you remember? <laughs> <laughs> They're like, he was good. All right, this young lady with the black and white stripe right behind our friend I Mark. I think this is probably our last question. Well, uh, the no. question was. <laughs> <laughs> the, the question I had to was. I think on he, that for a minute. Yeah, the well, question was would, would Jeffrey ever consider, you know, doing LTD again? And he said. I said, well, I had to think about it for a minute. And I said, no. <laughs> no. In a word? No. Um, well, being honest and real, when I left LTD, it wasn't a very amicable breakup. It was oh, kind of ugly. What happened? Uh, <laughs> pillow talk. Pillow talk. Oh, God. <laughs> she wants to save it for pillow talk. See, that's your greed. So, uh, well, so what You're happened? Being greedy. I am, I am. But they want to know. Well, I mean, they just didn't give me a nice farewell. It was kind of like they wanted to hold me hostage. Mm. Uh, you know, I had been in the group from 1970 till 1981. I probably did most of the writing with the group, and I kind of let them know that I wanted to leave two or three years before I left. And they kept saying, well, stay on one more time, do one more album, do one more album, you know, do one more tour. I'm like, okay, I'll do it, I'll do it. But what happened really is the group never allowed me to grow as an individual. Uh, every opportunity that came my way, they would shut it down. So the record company asked me to do a solo record, they shut it down. You can't do it, you're blind to the group. Other artists were asking me to write songs for them, you can't do it, you got a song. So they were kind of stifling me to the point where I couldn't grow as an you know, as an artist and an individual, so I chose to leave, and they made it very difficult for me in every way, right down to my record contract because A and M Records wanted to sign me. I was on A and M, but there were some things that I had going on with LTD that they wouldn't let me out of to sign, and so it was not a very nice break. But I have to say, it was probably one of the best ten years I've ever spent in my life with LTD. Mm-hmm as far as musically and the relationships I've had. Mm -hmm. It was only like one or two people that were kind of ugly about the whole situation. And they basically told me that, you know, nobody knew who I was, was LTD. And they were right, nobody, they knew my voice though, they didn't know my name, because my name was never out in front of LTD. So the object was to associate the name with the voice, which is why my first album was just called Jeffrey Osborne. So radio would have to say, this is really No Need No Light by Jeffrey Osborne from the album Jeffrey Osborne. And finally, it just kept associating the name with the voice. But uh, 
I, so I told them, well, if this is going to be like this, then I'll, don't ask me to do anything again. And, uh, and they have, and I haven't. <laughs> well, so now, glad. now you know but why the answer I'm was just no. Being, but okay. then, you know, just being real, that's <laughs> yeah, basically you. what it is. Uh, it was, and it wasn't a good breakup. And it, you know, the sad thing is that there's not a lot of original people left in LTD. A lot of the members, a lot of the members have passed. I mean, just last week, one of oh. the members passed away. So it would be a totally different group now, uh, you know, because we're all getting up there in age, and mm -hmm. it's. You know, it's just, was this life, you know? Yeah. <clears throat> it worked out well, the way it should have. That, they know uh, your well, name now. Huh? <laughs> that's we know a great, your name That's now. a great segue to get out of here, because we got to get out of here. Because I got so a whole perfect. bunch of questions to ask I know, Jeffrey, we do but too, I, I don't so have time. <laughs> I know everybody else does, too. But so. thank you for your generosity and just enlightening oh. us, because we didn't know that background story. Yeah. So mm -hmm. thank you for pillow right. talking, <clears throat> Tony. Okay, well, do, give, us, give us the honors, <laughs> Angela. <laughs> give us the Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, did we love this? Put your hands together right. for Jeffrey, Jeffrey Osborne. Osborne. All right, thank you. <laughs> so are you cool with